hello, hello, hello. Let us do some more sculpting. Um, see where we left off last week. Just put his leather head on him. Um, some panel loops on there. Probably had some stitches. Got to do a hole for the ear. Take the helmet further along. You can also probably do some speaking beats. What's happening? You can probably also do some uh, stitching and maybe a little uh, plating and stuff on there. I think I'll also probably want to do some Z sphere. Uh, start putting his body in place. I'll do that now. I want to go a little bit more stylized with the guy, so he's going to be um, a little more exaggerated. I like to kind of play with that line a little bit. Um, I'm still trying to, you know, get a little more proficient in it. Um, you know, it gets kind of tricky to blur that line without living in the uncanny valley. When you talk about stylized versus realistic and uh, I'm just trying to find that sweet spot so I'm doing a lot of toying with that concept lately with all my characters um, something like overwatch representing you know as far stylized as I would ever want to go um, I think there's just a lot of really cute cartoony stuff in the space and it's not really for me so I kind of like to have Overwatch be sort of high watermark for stylized stuff. And, you know, I guess probably like, you know, a lot of people are doing realistic really, really well. I mean, there's just so many, I mean, realism is really has come a long way in terms of like skin shaders, PBR materials, and, and all the wrinkle maps and interesting deformations people are coming up with, like the... The ways in which people are doing uh, hyper-realism in video games today is um, really, I mean, there's just examples of it all over. So, like, just trying to find some place in between, um, I think, is a really good place to live. Um, you know, I think one of my favorite examples of this is actually, what's up, R. Baxter, how you doing? One of my favorite examples of this is, uh... One of the other instructors here at ZBrush is uh, Michael Pavlovich, and he really hits one of these, uh, it's this nail on the head here, I'm just trying to find some of his work. Here's a good example. So like, this guy right here is a good example of just like stylized realism, I think, 
done really well. Like it's clearly not photorealistic, but it's also, you know, it's got, it's not like low poly stylized to the, to the place where the Overwatch lives. You know, I think like, you know, work like this really sort of hits a sweet spot for me. Um, it's where you can really kind of just like put your spin, your vision, like how much realism you inject, how much, um, you know, liberties, creative liberty you take is uh, all part of the artistic process. I think that's just, it's one of my favorite looks. It's very successful um, in that regard. So I just try to hit something similar. You know what I mean? Like, like I said, I'm still working on, you know, my method for this look here. Cause I'm actually not, not really cultivated this art style in my, uh, in my past. And it's just one of those things where I'd like to have it, you know, be second nature for me to sort of like abstract out the realistic elements that I don't want but also be grounded in reality so it doesn't look like a cartoon character animating around so that's just kind of the look I'm going for with uh, with our game Disc Jam and um, you know I think I'm, I think I'm pretty much I think with this bust I'm pretty close you know I think giving this guy a big head and sort of just like a uh, boxy shape is gonna work out really well too but we'll see. Yeah, for sure. He's uh, you could also catch him on uh, the Pixelogic stream. But um, in case you're interested in learning ZBrush, um, he's always instructing. He's always instructing on this channel. But he also has a YouTube page that is. one of the best resources out there um, it just covers pretty much everything and like I, the day after like the the week after um, ZBrush 4R8 came out he put up a what's new playlist with like 60 videos <laughs> 61 videos about like every single new feature um, really really helpful and um, if I ever like forget how to do something, like oh, how does that one tool work? I'll just go to his, I'll just search his YouTube page for for that phrase, and inevitably it's like oh, array mesh. That's right, it works this way. And then just you know, he's got a brand new array mesh video from two weeks ago. So yeah, and like I said, he's another one of our instructors here. So um, you know, feel free to catch his stream. He's very very. He's been doing this a long time. He's been one, he's one of the first people before I ever picked up ZBrush. Um, I picked up a video of his to sort of like you know learn the methods he uses. Yeah, he does he does the uh, like stylized realistic look very very well. There you go. What's up, Kyle? How you doing? Jose Luis, how you doing? Welcome, welcome. One thing I like to do is uh, when I'm doing armatures is uh, if you as you drag out the right size, hold control, and you can pull it out a little bit. So hit control, and then you start pulling it forward. So that helps things move a little bit faster. So sure what happened there? My whole machine seemed to lag out. What's happening? Everybody there? Yeah. Sorry, I'm not sure what happened. My machine just freaked out for some reason. <laughs> not even sure what could have caused that, but. Everything kind of locked up there. No, that was me, Gary. Sorry. Um, 
Not sure what happened there. My machine just went ape. Let me know if that stream starts to lag again, I'm not sure um, if it caused that. I did have a few things, extra programs open, so I closed those. The music's kind of being choppy and obnoxious though. over. I'm starting to get sick of these songs, but I'm not really in the mood to dig through a bunch of free music to try and find something better at the moment. These are super rough, by the way. It doesn't need to be all that sophisticated. I mean, once it get once it becomes clay, you know, you can pretty liberally start sculpting away and changing all this. So, you know, it's good to get like a rough idea with the Z sketch, but don't go crazy with it. Hands are something it's kind of nice to get right though, because if you get the hands wrong at this stage, you know, sculpting is going to be a lot. I'm gonna 
slight bend in the knee, not too much though. And the good thing to do is just test your head measurements. So a lot of times I'll um, let's duplicate this. Select lasso. get some head measurements. So he's about six and a quarter head proportions, um, and you know it's uh, something that obviously with stylized characters um, you do have a little bit of freedom there. Um, you know, with especially with like you know, children are about seven heads, um, seven and a half for adult men and women. Um, heroic portions can be higher, you know, like and the infants are like four heads. I'm looking at some reference here. Um, but with like senior citizens, you know, I think you, I can be a little bit more, um, you know, oversized head on like sort of a little body, you know, for, for like a he's like a bulky, strong guy. So, like, I think probably closer to like seven heads proportion. Um, maybe six and three quarters, you know, I think that that would make a lot of sense. Um. Much I'd love to leave him like just like six heads. So I think I'll probably take him to like maybe like six and three quarters. I think that'll look okay without being too silly. So that means the bottom of him would probably go to about three and a half. funny too because I always think these kind of things you can lose sight of and all of a sudden you're pretty far down the project and you're like oh something just doesn't look quite right proportions are a really hard thing like 
at a glance you can usually see something's wrong, but to see how subtle of a tweak it might be when it's a proportion adjustment you need to make, um, it can really sort of trick the eye and, and hide from you. Six and some change. Seems pretty good for this guy. Eight-headed male, um, belly button's right around three heads. So the belly button's right there, but he's shorter, so his belly button would be like right there, which I think is pretty decent placement given the current. Give that mass right there. Short, obviously. What was the shortcut to copy one tool and place it again? I'm talking about, yeah, is that the, the number one repeat transfer? Move plus control, is that what? The, yeah, repeat last transpose action is, is what one is. W is the move key. 
and Yeto Art, yeah, um, I'm gonna do the fingers, I'm gonna do the hands and Z-spheres as well, usually pretty quick. Um, it's tricky to get right though because of uh, it's easy to get a little too freeform. And all of a sudden you're sculpting on clay geo, but you don't really have decent proportions and all of a sudden. So. But I do like making hands with the Z-Sphere tool, when I, especially when I'm doing characters that don't have like, you know, exactly human proportions. I think that's a good place to start. Six and a half head old man character. I give him kind of a burly chest. He'll be kind of hunched over, I guess, maybe. So like he'll look, he'll look like he's thick, like. But you know, his years have taken their toll. His posture is maybe not great. Character models tend to be around 40 to 80 sometimes. Some of them will creep up to the hundreds, um, but usually around 60. coming through choppy on your guys' end. I'm certainly hearing it very choppy. Try closing my Chrome browser down. Sorry guys, one moment here. Please bear the silence while I try and get... Yeah, it's still choppy as hell, man. I think, my, I think whenever my PC freaked out a moment ago, I think it's just like... Acting bizarrely. Trying to see what could be 
like Yeah, I'm getting hammered from all sides right here, guys. Sorry. Yeah. Well, if the music becomes a little too choppy, I might have to restart my PC. Um, you know, if you guys don't mind it or can't really hear it, then I don't really care all that much to restart and break the stream up. But uh, let me know if it becomes annoying. If it's annoying you as much as it's annoying me. I don't really care all that much to restart and break the stream up. But. Uh, What's up, Pixel Projectile? How you doing? the same character from the moment is it from Jisk worst deal in my life when I bought it I'm not really sure what you're talking about <laughs> mm, precise placement's not all that important right here just want to get the size get him out there Freaking out. 
Might need to split the stream and do do a restart here in a minute, guys. Computers keeps on. Something got whacked. Maybe it's in system memory or something, but something got really screwed up. part of everything. Animation, sculpting, drawing, a lot of complexity, not a lot of space.
feels like decent proportions. And that's all that really matters now is that like, you know, the placement of the landmarks are in the right place. Um, yeah, so it's six and a half heads, which I think works. Um, where the kind of stomach is, like where the navel lies and all that, it's kind of important. I think that's about right. Too pot bellied, but it's got like a little bit of forward arc in the hips. Let's move that back. Slight bend in the knee. The toe should come out just in front of like the chest there. So yeah, so like this is basically what was that about half hour there? How many time do I have to develop a character the average? How much time does it take to develop a character? Um, so that kind of depends. I mean, like, you know, usually a couple weeks, two to three weeks. Um, I work pretty fast, and I tend to polish later, like, you know, you know, I think a fully fleshed out character with this, all the detail I would want, you know, like, um, you know, start to finish, 40 hours a week, like, regular, regular hours time. Yeah, you know, it's probably like four weeks a month to anywhere from like a month to two months, depending. I can get really, really, um... You know, it can get really, really time consuming, um, depending on what kind of complexities are introduced in your character. But a typical biped with like, you know, not a ton of equipment, like I think equipment armor, um, detailing cloth, um, sculpting realistic folds um, for deformation in video game engines, all those kind of things um, really add to the, th I mean, if you're just talking about sculpting a character, you know, you could be talking about a matter of days to weeks, um, probably days for just sculpting a solid character, but like, you know, when you want to do like the low poly and UV so it all projects well and goes in your engine well, um, edge loop so your, all your deformations are in, intact, and all the other things that go in your art pipeline for making characters for video games, um, you're talking probably, you know, several weeks to a month, if you know, two months on the higher end if you're talking about a super, super complex character. And of course it depends on if you're talking about, you know, how many people are on your art team? Is it one person or do you have a whole art team of artists? You know what I mean? But if you're doing everything yourself, um, you know, deformation, ready for animation, um, you know, probably in about a month, a few weeks to a month. Yeah, after um, after the uh, skinning pixel projectile, it's you know it'll be perfect to work with. I, I think I, like for now, like well, you know it's super easy to move Z, Z spheres around um, when you're just kind of settling things. Like when you're, I love Z spheres for proportion. Um, when you're trying to find you know just the correct size and shape of things, um, Z spheres really make things go a lot. There's just a lot more room for experimentation and for things to go wrong in a good way, find some, you know, find some things that, some happy accidents here and there. Yeah, I think, you know, decent sized arms relative to the size of his head, um, you know, pretty thick tree trunk legs and a nice separate, you know, I probably want to put this in an A pose just for, 
for the sake of rigging later on. Get the armpits off of his uh, off of his torso a little bit more. And it's good to, when the arms are straight down, you can kind of measure up where the navel would be with the with the the crook of the elbow there. Um, then when I rotate away, it's you know they'll they'll pull up and they'll be you know higher higher up in the y-axis from the navel. Um, but it's you know if they're if I know they're correct in the correct place straight straight, then I can rotate them out. Not to worry about that. These are all the things that like when you're mixing drawing with 3D, sometimes you have your tricks for handling this stuff on a sketch pad. Um, you know, leveraging 2D and 3D together to work on things like proportion and things that are not immediately obvious to the eye. And take a little bit of a trained eye to sort of dig out. I still struggle with it um, a lot. Oops. those fingers a little bit but let's turn this into a skin now that we have the spheres done um, and would you recommend just adding Z spheres to the joint areas or also between to the pose easier yeah so um, you know I I like doing you know typically if I'll do an armature uh, let me duplicate this off you know in the past when I would do an armature I wouldn't I wouldn't do the body shape all that much meaning I would delete all these intermediate shapes and I would just do the landmarks as they you know were I would do like the places I needed there to be shapes and that'd be it uh, and I would just start sculpting on that but as I've gotten a little bit better with Z spheres um, I start doing stuff like this because it's just more helpful to see and you know I can start checking things like the perspective and it doesn't take that much longer and I'm a little bit more I'm a little bit faster with Z-Spheres now than I used to be um, so I find that to be helpful um, yeah it's really a preference thing like when you do something like this it's fine because you're just really trying to measure landmarks like where does the crotch fall how long are the thighs like where do you split the legs where do you split the elbows where's the head gonna be like if that's all you really need it for I mean yeah like it's totally fine just to rip out joints um, you know but I had I had the intermediate shapes just because it's uh helps me visualize I gotta tell you I feel like a little scale here can go a long way for me yeah
Okay, sorry about that, guys. Um, when making a character for a character artist video games portfolio, do you recommend making an original character or sculpting already created character? Uh, that's a good question, Buddy Mink. Um, when I'm looking at portfolios, someone I might want to bring in to hire, um, there's two things that I think I try to get to the bottom of, and this has been um, something that, that I've seen written about before, but when you're hiring contract artists, a lot of times these people are showing you, I mean, obviously they're showing you the best of their best work. Um, the work they can produce on a day-to-day -day basis compared to the best work they've ever produced in their entire life, it's a very, very hard thing to ascertain. And a lot of businesses like give you sample assets or like say like, hey, like here's a 2D concept, give me a 3D sculpt, and you know it should take you this many hours, and then you know, and they they do like what's like what's called like test assets. Um, you know, we're only a two-man team, and I, I feel it's a little bit cumbersome and unnecessary. However, and it's it's it almost seems unfair to me to ask a, a freelancer to do that, but it's it's becoming common practice because when you look at someone's demo reel or you look at somebody's portfolio they have a surprising amount of gaps in their skill set that might not be represented there in the portfolio they go like that's a world-class model with like attention to detail on like cloth hard surface equipment uh, anatomy um, you know skin wrinkles and everything's there that I would want out of a character artist but you come to find out that like, oh, I did that when I was in some workshop with an actual 3D legend and he kind of pointed me at things I could do, but I don't really do that myself every day. And then like the work that they hand you is far, far, far different than the work that's sitting in their portfolio. And all of a sudden you find yourself you know, under contract with somebody who's not able to um, perform at the level that they demonstrated that they can. And, you know, I, I think it's a waste of time for both people. It's a waste of time for the artist because you're just going to you know invoke the termination clause of your contract and then you're also going you just got to go back to the drawing board and hire somebody else they got to go back to the drawing board and find another job so it's something to keep in mind that you know try to represent yourself certainly certainly showcase your best work um, but if you're presenting something that maybe one of your instructors built alongside you if you're presenting something that uses a lot of just uh, um, Oh, I don't know what's the word I guess I guess it's mostly if you're if you're representing yourself outside of your actual capabilities um, just for the sake of getting your foot in the door um, that's not gonna fly with a small small venture like my mine like like our company you might be able to get away with that at a big company where it's like you're you're afforded a little bit more low I mean they've already put you on the benefits program they've already interviewed you they've already had a few people sign off on you um, you know if you get vetted that hard you know, and you get you get the gig. You probably have a little bit more leeway. But that being said, um, you know, when you're talking about an original character versus an already created character, one piece of advice that I think is really helpful is to, if you're not a professional 2D concept artist, work off of somebody else's 2D concept if you want to showcase something. Because like, what I want to know when I'm going to hire somebody is. I'm going to give you an idea, I'm going to give you a broad stroke look, I'm going to give you a character vibe, a character feel. Can you take my description, or take this 2D drawing, take this concept art, and turn it into the 3D model that is going to be correct for my game? That's what you need to highlight the most. So there isn't a right or wrong when you say an original character or a character that's already created, but the way I think makes the most sense to do is to is to showcase your ability to translate an idea to a 3D model because that's the job and all I want to know is can you do the job um, you know you as a hire as an employer I don't have the luxury of just saying like this guy's portfolio has good artwork in it like that's not enough information for me to make a good hire um, you know we've made that mistake in the past you have to be really do your best to sort of dig into can they do the job? If like I throw you, maybe it's a, a a robot, and most of the stuff's hard surface. That's more mechanical than it is organic. But you've been sculpting anatomy for your entire you know career or education. You know that's that might not fly. And so it's like just represent yourself in your portfolio in the way that best highlights the fact that I can do this job. I can take you know just go to ArtStation, 
pick out a cool ass 2D concept because a million amazing drawings on ArtStation every day and just go grab a 2D concept that really like tickles your fancy and then would showcase your abilities and then make a 3D model out of that 2D thing. Give credit to the artist and say like this is from this concept, link the concept. But you know, employers won't frown on that because that's really that really is what the job is. You're going to be given a 2D concept, you're going to be given an idea and um, you know, they're going to want to see that you can like take that idea to completion in 3D. That being said, if if you're if you're if you're looking to join a studio as like, you know, the character artist, you know, as a generalist, as a 3D generalist, then maybe you're responsible for the 2D. It's going to depend on the job. It might like if like if you're not a professional 2D concept artist, you're going to be selling your modeling short by trying to do the whole concept yourself. Um, it takes a while to get to the point where you're just like inventing on the fly and you know creating really really polished finished concept work. Um, if you're doing it in 3D, if, if your main focus is like 3D sculpting, um, you know, you're not going to be as developed a 2D concept artist as guys who spend every single day of their lives coming up with brilliant 2D concepts. So, you know, it depends on the gig you're looking for. If you want to show that you can do both, you know, by all means, if you can do both, show like showcase that you can do you can do both. But, um, you know, ultimately, assuming that your portfolio is going to have more than one piece in it, I'd probably say it's best to, it's best to have both in there. But you know, if your job's gonna be just like 3D sculptor, like that's your job. You're not gonna be three. You're not gonna be doing concepts. You're not gonna be doing designs. It's just we're gonna give you a finished 2D concept that we got from our concept artist. It's gonna be like a studio gig like that. Then you know, it's probably best to showcase more that workflow. Showcase that you can take a 2D sculpt and finish it in 3D and make it you know make it your own. Make it uh you know make it something that represents the 2D feel. But in a way that's like you know, pixel for pixel, not identical. It has it has like the vibe of, of the character communicated there. It's really about communication at the end of the day. I mean, like that's just kind of true for everything in video games. Like, it's it's such a like, communication as a skill is uh, not always talked about as regularly as it should, given its importance to the production pipeline. What's up, Ashley? <laughs> nice heads, bro. Yeah, doing some head proportions and trying to figure out uh, what a stunted old buff guy in his like 60s and 70s would be hunched over, probably. Yeah, sculpting someone's concepts usually good as a. Hey, Mortar Crane, how are you doing? Um, sculpting on someone's concepts is a good place to start. And then, like you know, and I think uh, people's feedback about fan arts and you know, like doing your version of an Overwatch character, whatever it might be, um, 
you know, the best advice I've kind of seen in regards to that is just that, like, do that stuff for fun, do that stuff for practice, do that stuff, like, you know, working off of an existing character or in, in, in pushing your own spin on it, um, that's a good, that's a really good way to practice. You know, that's a really good way to sort of, um, you know, maybe you're designing alternate skins for an, uh, an existing MOBA character or something like. It's a really good way to practice. Um, you already kind of have these established characters and they're uh, the things that make them sort of iconic and, and stand in, in uh, what's the word? Uh, you know, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Not significant, but uh, signify them to, um, to, to audiences. You know, if you can kind of capture those things, that's a good that's a good thing to practice. And you'll and it's also it's a good thing to practice because if you don't do a good job at it, you'll be able to tell why. You won't you won't really sort of have those artist blinders on. Um, there we go. I think that's probably it. I'm kind of stocky. I'm not too overweight. Like looking at things, if things work small, they're gonna work big. So a lot of times when things are big, you kind of can get lost in them. But if they work, if they don't look weird small, then usually you're okay. Actually, did you go out last night? You looked like you were ready to hit the bars last night. You were all dressed up when you were doing your stream. I'm all dressed up myself right now in my pajamas in the middle of the day. All right, I'm pretty happy with this, where it's at. Um, I think it's time to skin this bad boy and start doing some sculpting. Yeah, Yeto, um, Ashley's uh, every Wednesday. She made some really cool stuff yesterday, too. I'll probably archive it on the channel. I always try to bring it up, but it's never up to time.
What's up, Wicked Dimension? How you doing? I'll just do something like this and then I'll keep the uh, keep the polygroups around, help me uh, tidy it up after the fact. No use trying to correct all that geo, I could probably just do a better job of it. Um, and Zonku, how you doing? Yeah, I got the uh, Battlefield 1 on sale, it's still fitting the shrink wrap over there. <laughs> just like putting it off, putting it off. Make adaptive skin, turn off Z spheres. Now I've got my skin here. Anybody seen this where the Ashley? The inflate brush applies to the whole damn mesh. So you don't skin as dynamism, dynamesh? Yeah, this will be a dynamesh eventually. Um, that the Z spheres are a good way to block out stuff. Like for example, like this thing was a dynamesh sphere. That eventually made into the face. Like that was just a dynamo sphere. Um, but when you're doing like the proportions of the body and all that, it's helpful to. Um... Yeah, that was it. Thanks, Ashley. Changing brush size worked. I've never seen that. No, it's like if you're at, I see, if you're at like a thousand, it does the whole thing. If you're at anything less than a thousand, it like uses the brush size. It's bizarre. You know, this reminds me actually that considering this is like too big right now, um, I should probably bring over a reference sized character. That's a nice, so that character, hmm. that character is the game scale. Actually, that doesn't seem right either. Brush size one has secrets hidden in lots of brush. <laughs> brush size one has a lot of secrets too? I didn't know that either. 
New, new. So I think now that I've got the sort of proportions set up and I've got, you know, the size of the, like, I got, I, be, I got basically the base, the bust of the thing. Everything's kind of, Now is a good time to get it to the correct game scale. Um, so I think a good thing to do would be take a gozy mesh. I'm gonna take one of my game meshes and just send it over so that I get the right um, proportions for this dude. Uh, I want to make sure that I get his height correct. Because right now, like, I've just been sculpting kind of arbitrarily in ZBrush scale. So now I'm going to start doing the body and the hands. And he's going to start getting to, like, the, you know, the correct uh, proportion and all that. So I want to just get, like, a good... That's right, she's like massive. Dead. Hey, what's up, Doug? How you doing? EA Club with the monthly guy, oh, I guess.
you thought the crash was you? <laughs> yeah. Love that noise. They're like, bring! Oh, you're fudged. This guy has like kind of like this old barrel chested old sailor kind of feel. Send to the bottom so that it's out of the way. Areas where the muscles, uh, you know, an old flabby guy with weird stunted proportions, um, you know, you have the same sort of ridge in the hip bone, which is where the socket that connects to the femur exists, and your quads stretch all the way up to that, and they kind of come pretty high up your body there. This part kind of flattens out, but it 
tapers only because it reaches all the way down to the side. Not too, you know, chubby, but he's got a little bit of weight to him. What uh? What was the winning? Who won that? Who won that monitor? Uh, Mortar Caner did, or what? What happened? There? I saw Ashley. You had like a uh, Pixelogic channel. You mentioned you guys had that. You shared that. Uh. So what was like? What contest was it? What was the contest? Cintiq Pro, right? These things are bad. These things are sweet. I got a Cintiq Pro 16 for my laptop. And it is so nice. Super thin. ZBrush runs awesome in it. And they do H they do uh, 4K, surprisingly. Dynamesh pretty soon here. I'm just hacking away at some of this stuff right now for the time being. Trying to make my job easier when I do Dynamesh it. Was it like a oh the Mobile Studio Pro, not a yeah, not a Cintiq Pro, it was a Mobile Studio Pro. Wait, so was it like a, a raffle? What was it? Dude, that thing is awesome, by the way. Actually, I have I got a Cintiq companion, Mortar Cane. I hope you'll report back to me 
on that thing. I got a Cintiq com uh, companion a while back, and I just couldn't find a use for it. I tried to force it into my workflow. I tried to do whatever I could with it, but I just couldn't get it there. I don't know what it was. Uh, I'm actually going to eBay it pretty soon here. It's a fine machine, and I, I uh, got Windows 10 installed on it, and yeah, got it like up and running with all my apps, but I just couldn't, I found it was just, it just wasn't there for me, I don't know, it's hard to explain. I had all these weird little idiosyncrasies, didn't quite do it for me. Um, was it a raffle? How'd you win it? Was there a contest of some kind? My Cintiq, I use, like, every second of, I mean, I use my Cintiq like crazy. But the companion, I just wasn't able to get integrated. I got one of these little Bluetooth things here so that I don't need to have my full keyboard up. And I just have it sitting right to my left hand. It's like a pretty, there's not a single key I can't reach with one hand. Um, it's pretty, it's been pretty useful since I upgraded. But without this keyboard, the, I found the Cinti Companion, which is the old version of the Mobile Studio Pro. Um, I just couldn't get anything done without the keyboard. And then if I brought the keyboard, I'm automatically like kind of losing a lot of what's good about the Mobile Studio Pro. It's like I'm automatically like now I've got two pieces, and it's like not as portable. So in that case, I just rather have my laptop and a handheld. This is a raffle answer question on Twitter, I gotcha. I think it's probably time to dynamesh. It's starting to get a little bit unwieldy. Unwieldy? Probably going to lie, it's starting to get a little bit difficult to control. I get to sculpting and I start breaking all these landmarks I've set up. It's gonna lay in as much geo as I can before I start creating trouble for myself down the line.
Yeah, you know, I've been having a tough time trying to find mortar. I've been trying to having a tough time trying to find um, a good keyboard. This one is oh, it's the best I found, but like it's this Logitech one. But I can't do Alt F4 because some lunatic, some crazy psychotic lunatic, made it so that all the default function buttons are these like Bluetooth command things like that. So I have to do function alt F4 if I want to close something, or function alt tab if I want to tab out. And that's that's lunacy. Um, so Logitech's solution to that is like, oh, well, you can go and buy, you can download our software that is always running and uh, leave that running 24 hours a day. And now that's not an acceptable solution to me either. So, you know, trying to get the right size keyboard, um, the right layout. I found an R-Tech keyboard that just about did it but then it had the start button and the alt button were switched and I kept getting twisted up and it ended up costing me more time. Like I really, it's funny because like all the, I like I I'd shot for so long to find like the, the just the right keyboard and I have yet to find it, which is like in this day and age, you know. I, I have the Logitech K800 I think it's called, the over the full size one. But it's not micro enough. That's actually that one works just how I like it.